Okay, I kind of lost track of time a little bit on my six minute cooldown, forgot to uh, note when it went. So I'm just going to start recording now and I'm going to natter to you a little bit about uh, prior art in this field. Um, oh, there we go. So the part goes down there. Uh, yeah, prior art in this field. Um, so NotPad had uh, a good look at this with trying to implement it with a vacuum bed. And um, I, I never really saw that that came to much fruition on his blog. He had a pretty good stab, but eventually I think that the forces of warping were just too much to overcome with a vacuum-held piece of capton on the bed for an auto-eject system. Um, MakerBot also had a go at it with a system that they called their ABP Auto Build Plate. Um, and although that was a commercial product, it didn't really work very well. It just drops down into there. There it is. Um, and from what I hear, people never really got along with them. I've never actually seen one um, or seen much evidence of one running properly or effectively. Um, Ultimaker had a pretty good crack at it, and they are doing pretty much what I'm doing. They're printing PLA onto blue tape, though, um, and they use the head to knock the parts off. Um, but because they're printing on blue tape, what all the, they're kind of restricted to objects that have a low bed surface area um, because of sort of adhesion and the amount of force you have and the amount of force that you want to be exerting on your head when you knock the parts off. If you have a part with a massive surface area, it's going to have a huge amount of adhesion and you're not going to be able to knock it off with your head at all, or if not, without damaging your head. So they are seemingly restricted to printing things like, uh, you know, those stretchlet bracelets that have a single wall thickness adherence to the bed. But by using glass, and I use a little bit of hairspray on my glass, um, things stick really well when the bed is hot but as the bed cools and then I think it's to do with it with glass contraction differentials the parts basically pop off and become entirely loose and here we go second part on the way and because the nozzle is as much as is possible kept right down close to the bed with no uh, gap for the molten filament to leak out, you never need to prime. So as long as you're conscientious about the about the sort of G-code that you insert into your printer, um, then you're never going to get leaking, so you'll never require priming. Um, what this kind of means, and what I hope to get set up, is that you could have a printer that's remotely accessible over something like Octoprint, um, and you could literally send it G-code files, obviously G-code files that are specifically set for this type of printing, um, and it would print the object, eject it out, and then sit and then wait for the next print. And you could uh, have that as a web server. You could even have that publicly accessible as a sort of print booth, um, or as a print service, or even just a, a convenient thing for general rep wrappers. Um, it's quite a nice concept. Limitations are that it only works in a certain size of your bed. Obviously, you have to be able to um, get enough space at the front of the bed in front of the baffle where you print your item when the bed is all the way forward, which means that the back sort of third, maybe even a little bit more than a third of the bed, is off limits. Um, and the other big limitation is that it only works with PLA. Um, but other than that, Pretty damn handy, pretty nifty. Doesn't require any really special hardware. Um, most of the, the effort's done in G-code. All you need is, well, a bit of paper and something to stick on the front of your X-carriage. And that could be a printed part or whatever. You knock up by hand at home, really. Not much to it. So I hope that gives you guys some ideas and uh, hopefully we'll see it integrated into some sort of slicer or something like that to make it a little bit easier. Uh, one problem I did encounter is that um, M190, which is the set bed temperature and weight, does not seem to work for waiting for a lower temperature. Um, so you can't use M190 S30 to wait until the bed reaches 30 degrees, at least 
in my case with Marlin. Um, it just, I think it perhaps only checks to see if the bed is above that temperature rather than in the vicinity of that temperature, which is why I'm having to use a set bed temperature to zero with uh, M140 and then dwell with a G4 command for a few minutes until the bed is cold and I have to sort of hard code in that um, the length of time it takes for my bed to cool. It'd be nice if that could be a little bit more integrated and then we could also use a fan to uh, rapidly cool the bed and make the whole process a little bit more quick and efficient. Okay, I'll stop blathering on about you now. Bye.